look like a cozy granny. This is a uh, like a sweater, if you will, from um, Amazon. I'll link below. They have a lot of different colors, but it is just one of those like, mm. anyway, so we're decluttering today. You know I love to declutter, but I do have to be in the right mood. And so I filmed the actual declutter part of this yesterday and I definitely was in a decluttering mood. I was ready to get rid of stuff that wasn't being used, that had gone bad, that was the wrong shade, whatever. So I'm excited. Today we're going through my concealers. We're going through my setting sprays. Setting spray is a category that like, isn't even a category for me because I used one of them, maybe two, and that's it. So that's an easy one, but the concealer is interesting because I definitely have a lot of favorites, which you'll see, and um, some just ones that, well, you'll see. So anyway, and we've got this sweet boy joining us. You're a stinky breath. Anyway, so if you do like decluttering videos, I have been doing them for years. I have a whole playlist if you wanna catch some of them, especially some of my recent ones where I'm decluttering my same makeup collection. I will link that playlist below because it's juicy. If you're wanting to get inspired to declutter, those will definitely help and hopefully this one will too. And without further ado, let's declutter some makeup. Alrighty, so I've got all the setting sprays and concealers here, but I'm gonna separate them. I was honestly getting a thumbnail picture, so I kind of mixed them all up. But let me kind of get the um, different categories separated. Let's start with what I would be the most interested in if I were watching this, and that would be the concealers, because this is the thing that, you know, you discover what you like, and generally, as a rule, I feel like a lot of concealers perform similarly. It's pretty impossible to find a creaseless concealer, right? I mean, you can do some things, but if you've got creases under the eyes, it's it's just natural that it eventually they settle into them. But I definitely do have some favorites, which you guys know, so we are gonna dive in. So let me kind of organize it a little bit better. All right, so let's count how many we have. 41 concealers. Two of these are like not technically concealers, kind of, we'll talk about, but 41 concealers. If I had guessed without looking in my drawer, I think I would have guessed like 20 to 25 and that's too many. 41 is definitely too many. So I just spilled my coffee on the carpet, you guys. <laughs> I was gonna brag and say, oh, I'm so smart because I put my coffee like in a container on the carpet and I thought, well, if it spills, it would just get, this wasn't it. Cause obviously this has holes. Doesn't matter because I spilled it anyway on the carpet. So that's what I'll be working on after this video. Okay, diving through. Something that is super old is this right here, the Marc Jacobs Concealer. I don't even know if they still make this. This, I couldn't even tell you how old, but it is really creamy. And so that was why I'd kept it for so long, but I don't often use this kind of product anyway. So that's an easy, easy declutter. I was not a fan of this Benefit Boing Bright On Concealer. So the thing I did like was this one here. Um, they're Cakeless Concealer. So they're both from this Boing line. But the Brighton one, I just felt like didn't do what I wanted it to do. It has been a while since I've tried it. I'm like, maybe I should try it again, really make sure. But I don't know, I felt like it kind of blended away, but looking at it on my hand, I feel like that looks nice and definitely bright. So I'm gonna go put this in my vanity after this video. And if I don't use it in the next few weeks, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on. But like I said, I have had it a while, but I just feel like I haven't used it recently enough to feel confident that I still wouldn't like it, you know? I did not like this one, the Essence Camouflage Matte Concealer. It just made my under eyes look, yeah, and you can even see, it just kind of looks like a gross consistency. Um, and the thing that's crazy is, look how gross that looks. This is not that old. <laughs> and I've only used it probably five, if even five times. So I'm. it's weird that it looks like that, but anyway, that one can go for sure. So I have multiple shades of the Lancome Taunt Idol Ultra Wear. I have Bis W and Buff N, if that's helpful at all. Um, I'm assuming it's Bisque. So this is Bisque W. Oh, there we go, shade 250. And then this one's 215, the Buff one. So I think out of the two, I think I'm gonna keep this one. It seems to kind of almost blend into the skin a little bit better. And that's actually great because I feel like I was consistently confused as to which shade I liked better. So just doing that quickly. So number 250 can go and I will keep to 15. These are nice. They're they're one of those products that you can kind of wear everywhere on your face because they're real creamy, but they still have some coverage. 
they really are nice. I still don't feel that that's my perfect shade, but it's close enough. I'm like, I've spent enough money on these. I'm not buying it again. <laughs> One of the concealers I reach for constantly is the Catrice True Skin Concealer. This is just one of my favorites. You can buy it on Amazon. I'll link the exact one below because I feel like sometimes it's not the right one on there. There's something about this formula that it just blends in easily. It looks wonderful on the under eye. Definitely has higher coverage, but it doesn't feel like a high coverage concealer. Because for me, I, I tend to reach more for a medium coverage, but this, if I, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like most other thick, opaque, high coverage concealers. It performs like it's a super comfy medium coverage. I don't know if that's making any sense, but this is definitely one of my favorites and it's only around $10. So I have the shade 010 Cool Cashmere. If you're curious and I need to repurchase because this one's almost gone and I would miss it terribly if it were not in my collection. <laughs> All right, so I also have a few shades of the Beautiful Skin Concealer. I do not like this. I think it looks horrendous on the under eye. I don't know what it is about this and I haven't, I don't know that I've heard anyone that does like this. So it's just one of those products that I'm gonna declutter. I might put it in a pile of like high-end products I don't like cause I might do a video and or like a Instagram reel on them. Um, but I only need one for that and then that one will go but this one can also go. This teeny tiny Benefit Cakeless Concealer. I feel like I don't really need to keep. I really like the one size, what is it called? Butter Silk Concealer. It's, it's very silky, like it just, it's super creamy. I think my, there's something wrong with my stopper, I don't know. But I love the formula of this, it's super comfy, very hydrating, but it doesn't look too hydrating. Like once you blend it in, it doesn't look shiny or anything like that, it just looks healthy. So this is one that I have liked. It actually kind of reminds me, consistency wise, of the Catrice one I was just talking about. So honestly, like if you like the idea of this one, you might consider just trying the Catrice one first or only the Catrice one, because it's my favorite. I was not a huge fan of the CoverGirl Simply Ageless. It was fine, but it has this weird applicator where it's like this porcelain and it's supposed to like feel good on the under eye, but you, you cannot get enough product on it. Like you're consistently dipping back in. So just one of those kind of like, eh, they tried something different. It was kind of a miss. I don't love the uh, concealer itself either. So I'm gonna pass that on. But I feel like generally a lot of the CoverGirl Simply Ageless stuff is actually pretty good, but that one I just was not a fan. Okay, I've gotten so many questions between, oh, where is it? My Bobbi Brown, I do not know where that is. The little body, Bobbi Brown pot of concealer. I'll put a, I'll pop a picture on the screen. I get a lot of questions asking that one or the Bobbi Brown stick. Like, which would I recommend? I wish that the stick were as good as the pot. I'm telling you the pot is better, but the stick is still really good. So, you know, it's just slightly different. I think the one in the pot is just a little bit thicker. And I hesitate to say that because I feel like that's going to turn people off. It's not thick, but it's just a little bit thicker. So I feel like it covers a little bit more. I don't know, it's it's the weirdest thing, but I don't think this is bad. I still think it's good and I'm, I still wanna use it up, but I get that question a lot. I would still, if I were choosing between the two, I would go with the pot. So good. Like in theory, you're supposed to use these as correctors, like you'd put it on, blend it in, and then maybe use a concealer on top. For these, I just use them as they are. I think they're good enough, especially the pot. Another one I was not a fan of, the Essence Keep Me Covered Concealer, woof. <laughs> This stuff made my under eye look awful. Now shade wise, it's not great for me either. So that didn't help things, but it's really thin and it just, I felt like I looked older with this on. It sunk into every, I mean, I feel like it was sinking into lines I didn't even have. So very excited to get rid of that. This concealer drawer has been one of those drawers that like every time I open it, makes my skin crawl because I'm like, I knew there were so many things in here I just don't like that I'm very excited to whittle this down. So the Rare Beauty Concealer, also not a fan. I don't know. It's, it's, just look at it. I feel like it doesn't know what it wants to be. It's like, it, it is, I'm trying to find the words to describe. I feel like it just keeps going back and forth. So even when I would blend it with my brush, it felt like it would be as easy to blend as most of these liquid concealers that I use, but it just went back and forth. And so it was just one of those odd things that I never got it to look like it was done <laughs> blending. And every time where I, I could always see the edge where the concealer was and the foundation began, no matter how much I tried to blend it. So just one of those kind of odd formulas that I personally am not a fan of. This tiny NARS one is really old. So I'm gonna throw that one away. I have two 
NARS ones, one in creme brulee, one in vanilla. I know I bought one of these and one was like PR. This one's old, okay. So vanilla is definitely my better shade, I think, but this one's pretty old, almost dried out. So I'm gonna keep creme brulee, even though it's not perfect. I mean, that's still a really good shade for me. These are really creamy, but they're very easy to blend. There's something about this concealer, like there's a reason it's always been a cult favorite. Do I have other concealers I like more? Yes. But do I still think this is a really nice concealer? Yeah. But it's funny because the name Radiant Creamy Concealer it makes me think it's gonna be super creamy, kinda like the one size one. And it's really not. Like not a lot comes off on the brush, but it just always looks really pretty on the under eye. Keep. We are rocking and rolling. The Oma Woke Concealer I liked, but it's getting pretty old. It's really hydrating, but I just, yeah, it's kind of smelling funky too. I've had it a few years. I mean, I'm pretty sure I bought this pre-pandemic, if not right near the beginning, I don't know. So it's a few years old at least, starting to smell off, but I liked this. I would recommend, especially since this is one of those products that they have so many shades. So if you were struggling to find a concealer that was good, that had your shade, this would be a good line to look at. So I do like it, it's just super old. This is one I can't get into. It's newer, it's the IRL filter finish. I just feel like it's just okay. It's still new though. I feel like I've only tried it like three or four times. It's really lightweight. So that's something to its credit. Like you saw how fast that just blended in. It's really lightweight. So I might give this a try a few more times just to be sure. Cause I, I did only get it a few months ago. So this and the benefit ones, we're just gonna try out in the next week and see if they stay. All right, so this is the newest concealer in my collection, the Huda Beauty Glowish Bright Light Sheer Concealer. I actually don't think it's as sheer as it as you would think. It just looks, I mean, it is sheerer. I mean, you can see that, but it ended up looking really nice on my under eye, and I don't typically like concealers like this, so it surprised me. I blended it with a brush and then I just kind of set it with a brightening under eye powder and the combo was really, really pretty. So I was pretty excited about that, especially since this isn't cheap. So I have the shade 1.5 Fair Cool. This is one that I like, but it never, it just doesn't compete with my Catrice True Skin and they're very similar. So this is the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. I end up not reaching for this very often because I'm always reaching for the other one. So I think I'm gonna pass this on. It's still pretty new because um, I bought a different shade, so I think I might see if one of my sisters want this. So we have a couple of those like brightening pens, if you will. We have the e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealer. This stuff is actually really nice. It just really nicely brightens. This is easy to use on other parts of your face too. I feel like it had its moment in the sun and then people stopped talking about it, but it's it actually is a really good product for kind of highlighting parts of your face. I mean, not with a glow, but with brightness, you know? Um, so I'm gonna think about this. Cause honestly, it's gotten lost in my collection so I never reached for it, but I, I kinda wanna use it, you know? So the YSL one, this is not their typical, wait, is it? I thought this was the concealer, hold on. I think this is the one that was meant to be the concealer too, like it's kinda, I don't know. I actually don't like this as much as the e.l.f. one and this shade is definitely not right for me. So definitely gonna get rid of that and keep, I think the e.l.f. one. I know I'm gonna keep my Milk Makeup Future Fluid Concealer. This has become a staple for me. It's just an easy, medium coverage, everyday use type concealer. I like that the packaging is just different than a lot of other concealers. It's kind of short and squat, but still cute. Uh, yeah, I just, I really just don't have anything negative to say about this. It's easy to use. It's pretty on the under eye. I have the shade 6C. All right, we need to get a little more cutthroat here. So we have a few of these. We have the Milani and the Revlon Colorstay Skin Awaken. I feel like both of these impressed me if I'm remembering right. This one is definitely like a brightener shade, the Revlon one, and so is the Milani. Looking at them, the Milani one is definitely a little more matte than the... Revlon one, so that's just kind of interesting. They're both looking similar once you kind of blend it. Again, these are ones that it's been a while since I've tried them and I've certainly never tried them side by side. I was gonna say I'd include them in a dupes video, but they're like the same price, so it's not really, you know, when we're talking about a drugstore dupe for a high-end product, it doesn't really make any sense. Let me just think about this one. All right, so this one's newer, the Dior Forever Skin Correct. I'm not convinced this is worth the money. I know for some people this is their holy grail, I, I just am not. I've struggled to find my shade, so this is still not right for me. So that's a piece of it. 
Um, and maybe that's it. Like if I had found my perfect shade, maybe I would just love it. Formula wise, it seems nice. Like when I blended it in, it seems nice, but it's just such a high price tag that I feel like I should really, really love it if I'm gonna spend this much amount of money. So I'm not ready to get rid of it yet because I mean, I literally just got it a few months ago, but just wanna share, I don't think it's worth it. All right, this Maybelline Fit Me one is pretty old. I do like this concealer. I could see myself repurchasing in the future. It's just a good one. It's creamy again. I would say light to medium coverage, maybe leaning medium. It's just good. It's one that's been at the drugstore for forever and people love it. And I do think it's a decent concealer, but this one's pretty old. Love the Wet n Wild Incognito, but this one is <laughs> very old. Ooh, it just, it's going on weird. Uh, it's a great concealer. Another one I would con uh, consider repurchasing. If I were choosing between the two, I actually would go with the Wet n Wild. It has just a little bit more coverage. The Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. I swear this, I, I use it, but I haven't used it in a while, but I'm like amazed at how quickly it went down. I'm wondering if they like put in less than they used to, I don't know. But it really, this is such a neutral shade, which is I think part of why I like it. Um, so I'm gonna keep it, cause I, I'll probably be able to use that up and I genuinely do like this formula, still like 10 years later, which is pretty awesome. I also really like the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. It's kind of different than the others where you actually squirt it out with a pump. It reminds me of the MAC concealers that used to come like this. Do they still have those? It's just a good concealer. It's pretty high coverage. It's still comfortable to wear. It's inexpensive. So this is one that's gotten a lot of love over on TikTok uh, for good reason. It's just a good, good one. I love my Shiseido Synchro Skin Concealer. I think, yeah, this is my newer one. I had an old one and I finally, finally bought a new one because it was so old. But I just, this is my top. Look at that, it just blends, oh, I'm out of frame, I know. It just blends in so easily, it is so pretty. This is the one that when any of you guys have like splurged and bought it on my recommendation, I've gotten DMs and stuff like that that are just like, it is the best concealer in the world. It really is close tie to the Catrice, but I really, really love this. The Cakeless Concealer I do like, I'm just convinced the shade is not the same one I used to have. So I think I'm gonna pass it on while it's new let someone else enjoy it and use it. Um, one of my sisters that's fairer than me because it's just a little too light for me. I bought it, I think I, if I remember right, I bought it during the Ulta sale. Or maybe I had just bought it before the Ulta sale, then it was part of the sale and I was like, dang it. That's the way it goes, Murphy's Law. This Hourglass Concealer is really old. I actually did like it, but this one is, I couldn't even tell you how old it is, so that's gotta go. This Eye Bright, I really liked this stuff actually a lot. How old is this? It's very hydrating. It's just one of those like concealers just easy to use. Very messy in the end, but I don't know that I'm ready to part with this yet because I genuinely do like it. And then the Neutrogena Radiant Creamy Concealer I like as well. It's just pretty max medium coverage for sure, but um, I just, it's just a pretty and an easy one too. So a lot of favorites there at the end. Now these will be a little easier. I am keeping all of them because I love my Glossier Stretch Concealer. I did not appreciate this enough like back in the day. Now I get it, but I feel like more often than not, just throw on a little bit of sunscreen, a little bit of concealer, something like this, maybe some powder foundation. Absolutely gorgeous. Same goes for the Becca. This is still newer to me, the Becca Smashbox stuff, but I'm using that, trying that out. This Charlotte Tilbury one is getting pretty old, but I will use this up. I love it. My Bobbi Brown one, wherever that one is, <laughs> would be in there. And then this is my beloved Bare Minerals Powder Concealer. This is the stuff you could set your concealer with it. You could just use this as your concealer, but it is loose. And yeah, it's just, it's just so good because it provides coverage on its own, but then it also can set your concealer so it doesn't look hydrated. You know what I mean? Like too glossy, if you will. So. It's just something that I always have in my collection. I always will and yeah, and it'll last forever. And then this is one I'm still trying out, the Revolution Line Fix Under Eye Primer. I've literally used it like six or seven times. I've liked it so far, but I, I honestly just forget to use it when I'm doing my concealer, but it does seem to help with the like concealer sinking into fine lines. So I wanna use it some more and make sure I'm not just like thinking it's doing it. I really feel like it is working. So thinking about these, 
I think I'm gonna pass them on and my only reasoning being, or maybe just because I know I don't often reach for products like this, if I'm gonna just brighten really quickly, I'm gonna use something like this potted one. I'm not necessarily gonna reach for something like this, so they are both good. I'm just gonna, I just don't need them. Wow, all right, we are getting rid of 20, keeping 21. That was not intentional, but that could not have worked out any better. So this is what we're getting rid of here at the top. This down here is what we are keeping. That is a lot better. Like looking through this, there's nothing I'm gonna miss. Looking through here, there's a few things that might eventually make their way out if I don't end up loving them, etc. Um, and then a few that I will just, gosh, it's so messy. A few that I will just use up naturally because they're, you know, like this Maybelline one I'll use up. This one I think doesn't have a ton of time left. So it's a good feeling. I'm feeling really good about this. I'm glad to pass these on to someone else. Some of them, of course, will go in the trash as well. Let's do setting sprays. All right, so here we are. This is gonna be pretty easy, you guys, because I know what I use, I know what I don't use. I rarely use setting spray. If I do, this is the one I use. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I swear to you, I notice the difference in wear time. I notice the difference in how my makeup looks. You know, if it's all powdered and I put this on, it just looks perfected. So this is an easy, easy keep and then never use 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 oh i loved this for so long but i just don't feel like i i reach for it and it's also getting pretty old so gonna pass this one on or throw it away so i'm down to my like fix plus and my travel fix plus and then two spf setting sprays so i've not been super into doing this kind of thing but I probably should, you know what I mean? I like the idea that, you know, I can reapply the actual SPF to my face, but I like that I could also toss some of this on top of it too, just to get a little extra protection. Plus also just going at, about your day, if you put makeup on and stuff and you have your SPF underneath, toss a little bit of this on top, again, for that added layer. This Soleil one, they're both expensive. This one I bought for that Hilary Duff video. And, uh-oh, it expires March 16th, 2022. So there you go. That made that decision for me. And this expired in 21. Well, <laughs> I can't. that's on me. So I think what I'm gonna do with this is pour what I can of the big one in the smaller one and just keep the smaller. Um, because I like Mac Fix Plus. I think it, com it compares to this. I still like the Charlotte Tilbury one better, but I don't feel like I need both. And honestly, it is nice that this is smaller and I can just travel with it. Or now that I'm kind of looking at it, I'm like, this one's small too, but this one's even smaller. So I'm gonna combine these and just have the one. So then the only setting sprays I will have is Mac Fix Plus and my beloved Charlotte Tilbury one, which is great. Cause I had half a drawer devoted to this for a product that I just don't ever use, like ever. So we're saying goodbye. I, I feel like some of these were actually like kind of decent. The e.l.f. ones were pretty good. It's just hard to keep the nozzle working. So that's my biggest complaint for those. Rare Beauty one was not bad. The Maybelline Glass Spray was too glowy for me. Um, Physician Formula was okay. Definitely this had been my favorite of the like glowy setting spray. So if this is still sold, I would still recommend this. But like I said, I just, don't reach for it. So I feel really good about what we are keeping. In theory, out of all that we've done, this is everything I'm keeping. The concealers and then these setting sprays. We went from an entire drawer in my collection to a half drawer, which is great. That was the goal. So I hope that you enjoyed this decluttering video. You guys know I will always have these on my channel. <laughs> Anytime I think, you know, do I want to stop like sharing it? Cause I'll declutter regardless. I just know so many of you guys still love them. They're such an old school video, but it's one that it helps me out because I feel like it keeps me accountable and helps me keep my makeup collection in check. Obviously, my collection will always be a little bit larger because I love trying it out and I share that on here and it's just kind of part of the whole thing, but it's nice to kind of keep it in check because it does start to get a little bit overwhelming. Like my concealer drawer really was getting overwhelming to me. So it's a good feeling. Anyway, um, I'm filming by the way, this intro and outro at the end of the day. And I am, <laughs> I'm like done. Like put a fork in me. I just, <laughs> I am so tire, tired, Tyler's about to get home with the girls and it's it's time to make dinner. I, I want to like watch an episode of something after the girls go to bed and go to bed myself because we're just at that level. That's where we're operating. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> I'm 
feel like I was weird in this part. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you'll check out my decluttering playlist if you missed any of my recent ones. And I hope you subscribe, of course, too. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.